Hello, welcome back to another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sticking out your thumb and joining me along with my journey into the amazing world of fountain pens that we are very fortunate to be able to enjoy. I get emails from uh, Karis Pen Company. So I got an email that had a nice deal and I ended up pulling the trigger and ended up with this pen. I love their packaging, very simplistic, very functional, very recyclable. Get a nice little sticker, good color combo, and we have the pen. So what attracted me to this pen and what made me pull the trigger? Well, two things caught my eye. One is this tumbled kind of reddish anodized finish, kind of dark gray, also kind of matte finish on the clip and the finials. And my uh, original Decograph uh, is on to a new owner, so I figured it was time to get another one. Cat comes off in a little less than one and a half turns, and we'll see a nice anodized section. Same color material as the cap and barrel. I think that's always a nice touch. And a nice custom engraved Karis nib with that kind of Art Deco design on it. And I got a fine. I have a stub in this. I wanted to try a fine, and, and recently I've been writing on some less than, than good paper. So I figured a fine nib with a little bit of a dry ink in it would allow me to write with uh, this pen on, on more than just uh, the premium papers that I generally use for like letters and things, but for notes. Uh, lesser quality paper works well. So we're going to look at this pen, discuss a little bit the design, compare it to other Keras uh, pens I have. One thing I think it's really nice that they did is, is the last quarter turn, you can feel it engage an O-ring in there. So you're, I expect this pen to seal very, very well. I'm just looking forward to it. I like the design. I like the feel. Not too heavy, not too light. It does have that substantial feel that you expect from a metal pen from, from Keras Pen Company and this does not disappoint. This is just a cartridge converter and the unscrew the barrel and you'll see the converter and you'll see water in it because this nib was examined and tested by G before it was sent to me and I find that to be excellent for the price of this pen and the hand attention that it gets is just excellent. So I'm just going to clean out the water, make certain it's nice and dry, and I'm just going to ink it up straight. I'm not going to do any cleaning like I normally do, and we'll see how it works. It was very easy to get a really full fill. I've written a little bit with it, so it's down a little bit from its initial fill, but that was just once down, once up, once down, once up. I wanted to flush, as I always try to do, and saturate the nib and feed with the ink in it after I dried out all the water from the previous tests. We used to have a little bit of diffuse sunlight coming in, so I just wanted to show this pen under this type of light. And we're also going to take a look inside of the cap. It's a nice plastic liner. It's going to seal that against that section. And you can see that rubber O-ring that's at those top of those threads. So I'm impressed with the quality that they put into making this pen seal up and keep the nib wet. So here's a collection of some of my Keras Custom pens. And also some other metal pens, just to put some things in perspective. So we're going to go through a little bit of a change of the lighting, just to see how it impacts the color. We're going to introduce some more sunlight. And the camera will automatically adjust to the extra light. So 
I'm raising blinds and now I'm introducing some LED lights. I like to remove shadows in my filming and now we're going to add on the final set of lights. So this is what I normally film at so hopefully you can see if there's any transition. I won't be able to see it until I, I look at the video when I put it on the computer. So this is the Fountain K and this is in like a, an anodized finish which is kind of glossy. This is tumbled. Uh, here's an ink in brown which is stone wash they called it. So the surface has a little bit of texture to it but you can see where the edges the anodizing is worn off to kind of give it that used look. And here's a plain uh, star liner with aluminum, just tumbled aluminum. I love the way that this feels. Here's a Namisu in a, a matte dark blue color. Pen BBS 350 in a matte red color. How could we forget Fine Writing International with this golden armor pen with a, a brass finish. And then uh, Certainly in this mix is the Moonman uh, T1. With kind of, again, it's in the blue family, more in the teal of the blue, a little bit of green in there. And this is a different design, kind of like the fine writing one where you have a barrel, which is a clear, and the finials, which are made out of the same material as the cap. Uh, the Golden Armor is by far the most, uh, the heaviest pen of this group. So let's... Uh, add another pen into the mix and get rid of a few and talk about Kara's pens. So I added the only non-metal pen that I have. Well, I have two of them, the Vertex, which I think from an engineering design, manufacturing functionality, I think it's a great pen. Um, limited supply and this is uh, one that they made in a, a nice iridescent uh, Italian uh, resin which uh, has a name that's like the shark name, which I'm not going to pronounce. In my uh, description, I'll put links to reviews of all these pens. The Starliner and the, and, and the Vertex, I, uh, sorry, they're my original Vertex. Let me bring that one in. Here's the original Vertex. I got it at a DC pen show a number of years ago, and the Vertex was very hard to get a hold of for a long time. And they did make some interesting uh, changes in the engineering and manufacturing of this version versus the original version, which I would call a pre-production and a, maybe like a prototype. I think it's good to compare these two just for the finish. Uh, interesting color in, in both of these pens, which I think is indicative of, of Kara's Customs dedication to producing some very functional pens, pens that are built like tanks, which will survive and be able to be passed down generation after generation. And this uh, has that nice titanium nib from Bach, which they give you as an option. And you can also get a gold nib, and I haven't gone for that. And also, in many pens, they give you different materials for the section, which I like the way it's, it weights the pen. Uh, this is a pop-off cap. A lot of them are uh, threaded on. It's a nice broad uh, Bach nib, number five nib. That's one thing about the deco graph that I'm very happy with is they put a number six, six nib in it. I just think that gives me a lot more options if I do want to swap at some future time and Bach and Yovo and and Knox and, and all those other number six nibs will easily swap in if you need to. And this one has that nice 1.1 stub and Keras added when they did the engraving they added the size of the nib here above Keras, so I thought that was nice. And this is the one where the engraving is a little bit off-center, but it's nice to see on the decograph that it's back into the center. 
So that's, I think, an excellent example of the range of pens that Kara's Custom makes. They don't come out with a lot of new models, but when they do come out with them, I'm impressed and I like them. And uh, you can get them sometimes at a, at a very good price. And the delivery was two days FedEx from Arizona to New Jersey. So after waiting some time, months for deliveries uh, from orders overseas, it's nice to get something in a couple days. So a new pen, what ink to put in it. And as much as I don't think I'm that influenced, but it's always nice to get a color of ink that kind of complements the pen. So this is an ink I have not done uh, uh, in a pen before in a review. This is Cherry Sunburst, and it's part of that guitar series that Diamine made, and, and all these colors I've been very happy with. Here's the color card. Now that's definitely a reddish orange. You lay it on thick and it just gets really dark. No real sheen or shimmer. Here's the normal chromatography. And we can see a little bit of gray here at the bottom. And then it, a little bit of a pink that transitions into an orange. And then this interesting kind of purplish edge there. And I also wanted to try it dry just to see if it had any water resistance. And it seems to have a very little bit. And if we can compare these two chromatographies, the color just stays more saturated, doesn't move. So that's a good indication. It's dried for 24 hours, so that's uh, an indicative of it. But I certainly wouldn't call it a water-resistant ink. Now it's time for the writing. And there's the microphone, which I place close to the nib when it's on the paper. And you can hear that. It really amplifies and magnifies the sound. But I try to be consistent so you can compare the different sounds from different nibs. So overall, I like the pen. I think the weight is good. Here's the weights. I think that quick uncap is, is very nice. It fits well in the hand. That section is, is about as small as I like, but it, it works and it, and it functions well for me in that the way it's shaped uh, goes well with the way I like to hold it. And if I hold it a little bit away from the smallest section, it becomes nice and large. And here's those dimensions of that section. The pen is also a good length, not too long, not too short. It fits great in the hand, unposted. And it does post fairly deeply, and it feels good when it pushes down, and that it's there to stay. And it's certainly a handsome looking pen, and it feels nice. It doesn't really change the balance that much. So you can easily use this posted if that's what you prefer. So overall, I'm happy with this nib. It, it's tuned just right. This is a dry ink, which is what I wanted. It should work well on, you know, poor quality paper that's more ink absorbent. And as for a fine nib, it does what it's supposed to do. And you can't ask for more than that. So on this Fabriano paper, you're going to get a decent amount of feedback. If I was on Tomo River, you get much less and uh, on Rhodia and Clairefontaine you also get less but you know I I'm okay with it I may smooth this nib just a touch and I think you know Bach nibs are kind of known for their feedback so that's not unexpected so now it's ready I'm ready to rate the pen I'm going to give it a 9.2. 
I'm going to give it one check for the nib, but it's a classic Bach nib, so it's not really that much of an indicative of the pen, but it's a good nib that they put in the pen, and it's nice that they tuned it, and then it writes perfectly right out of the box. And I'm going to give it one check for the design and the look and the finish, and one check for the quality of the pen. I mean, you can't not admire and appreciate the something that's going to last pretty much forever. So reach the end of this video. Hopefully you found it interesting and enjoyable to watch. So thank you for watching. May you have many good writing experiences and, you know, find that pen and ink and nib combination. It just goes wow. And hopefully you write better than I do. And over the camera, eh, it's not the easiest thing to do, but I want to show how that nib writes, and I think that's more important than trying to show whether I have nice penmanship. So this is the end of the video. Hopefully you're staying safe and healthy and, and enjoying life to its fullest. And surviving this uh, strange time that we are in. And yes, it does write with no pressure. So until the next video, we're going to say bye. And I do like this. Uh, I've been on a roll now with uh, nibs and inks and writing, and so this is another pen that just adds to that. See you later.